air conditioners and heating systems can be some of the most energy hungry devices in your house. And that gives us smart home nerds a really big opportunity to use clever automations to make them more efficient. I moved into this new house last winter, and it's now halfway through summer, or whatever we are calling this season here in London this year, and I've been diligently tweaking and smartening up my gas powered underfloor heating system and electric split system air conditioners. I've used a combination of clever scheduling, presence detection, and automations to get my energy usage down to as low as possible while still keeping the house at a comfortable temperature. Want to see what I did? Let's take a look. Before I started automating and tweaking things, I needed to get my existing heating system that came with my house talking to my smart home. But I also wanted to get some air conditioning installed. Most houses in the UK don't generally have air conditioning, but the last few summers have had some really hot weeks, over 30 degrees Celsius, which I think is about a thousand degrees Fahrenheit. Now, today the Met Office still has a red weather warning out for heat, extreme heat at that. So once again, there's likely to be impacts on infrastructure and also on health. So certainly something to bear in mind. These UK houses are designed to keep the heat inside because it's usually cold here, and that makes them unbearable during these hot days. As an Australian, I grew up with air conditioning everywhere. And since I'm now a homeowner who's also allowed to make massive holes in the walls, I got a local contractor to install air conditioning after we moved in. The contractor suggested Daikin air conditioning, which after some research suited me fine as they seemed quite energy efficient and could easily be integrated into my home assistant using a HACS integration. That was the cooling side sorted. Time to move on to the heating. My house has a pretty standard combination boiler that uses natural gas to heat the hot water and the heating. The heating system in my house is under floor and controlled by these heat miser thermostats on the walls of each room. Because I did zero research and just assumed that these were old school dumb thermostats, I was originally going to replace them all with new smart Zigbee thermostats. Luckily, a subscriber to the channel spotted the thermostats in one of my previous videos and messaged me to say that they were already smart home compatible with HomeKit using a bridge that I was able to buy for under £100. Thank you Cookie Mister for reaching out and educating me, I really appreciate it. The thermostats easily paired with this new hub and I could use their smartphone app to independently control each thermostat and heating schedule. What's even better is that I was able to use the Home Assistant HomeKit device integration to get all of these plugged directly into Home Assistant as well. I'm not recommending the Heat Miser or Daikin brand specifically. They're not sponsoring these videos and I couldn't tell you how each of these systems compare to any of the others. They just happen to be what I have in my house and so far they've been working well. I would have ideally preferred to use systems that don't require a cloud account or internet connection to control them but it seems that most products and vendors are still hooked on scraping up your personal data and using their proprietary ecosystems. To be fair to HeatMiser, their heating system works with HomeKit, so you can control it locally in your home network without internet access, but I still seem to need a HeatMiser cloud account to log into the mobile app. Hopefully these attitudes change in the future, but we'll see. Now you don't need to use these specific brands of heating or air conditioning in your home to be able to set up these smart home energy saving automations. There are lots of smart home products out there for all different kinds of heating and cooling systems, including smart thermostatic radio valves and IR blasters that work with almost any air conditioner that has a remote control. I personally use Home Assistant as my smart home platform, and so before I buy any new devices or appliances, I head over to the Home Assistant website integrations page and look at what's known to work well with it. Here you can see a list of all the climate control devices that are supported today. A climate device can be controlled in Home Assistant using automations and controlled manually using a thermostat card that you can put on any dashboard. In my house, you can access these dashboards from a smartphone or using these cool wall-mounted touchscreens that I have next to our bed and in a few other locations around the house. With my heating and air conditioning connected up to Home Assistant, I was able to start making them smarter. I started with the heating because that's usually turned on for many months of the year and represents one of the biggest energy consumers that I have in my house. Octopus Energy, my electricity and gas provider, conveniently has a Home Assistant integration that lets me bring in my usage into the energy dashboard via their API. Using this, I was able to measure my natural gas consumption as I tweaked and tested different heating automations to see if it had any impact at all on my gas usage. 
Unfortunately, it could only bring the usage in on a day-by-day -day basis rather than hourly, so I needed to run each test for a few days or even weeks before I was able to measure any noticeable impact. The first thing I tested was turning the heating off at night and then back on again during the day using the built-in scheduling system that's part of the HeatMizer app. This was much easier than trying to figure out how to rebuild all of the schedules inside Home Assistant. Just because I love Home Assistant doesn't mean I need to use it for everything. Use the right tool for the job and you'll get better results every time. Over a few weeks of testing and watching my Home Assistant Energy Dashboard, I realized that turning the heating off at night meant it had to burn a lot more gas each morning to heat the place back up again. With my underfloor heating, it actually turned out to be more efficient to just keep the heating thermostat set to the same temperature all day and all night. This meant that the heating only very occasionally kicked in for a short period of time to bump up the temperature by a degree or two, rather than running for a full hour in the morning to get the temperature all the way back up to the target by a full 5 degrees or more. Be aware that this is very specific to my house, with my floor plan layout, my level of insulation, and my type of heating system. Your house will probably be very different, so I strongly recommend going through this process yourself and making data-backed decisions on how you heat your own home. One of the downsides with this approach was that the bedroom would stay warm overnight, and we prefer the temperature to be a bit lower when we sleep, but to be warm when we get up in the morning and have to get out of bed. So in the bedrooms, I adjusted the heating schedule to be slightly warmer during the morning and the evening, and cooler throughout the day or overnight when we're either not in the bedroom or sleeping. I also realized that we were unnecessarily using energy to heat the top floor of our house, which is where both our home offices are, over the weekend when we were unlikely to be up there. I adjusted the schedule of these areas to a lower temperature from Friday night to Monday morning, and back up to a warmer temperature when we started to work on Monday. This worked really well because our offices are at the top floor of a well-insulated house. They barely dropped in temperature over the weekend thanks to all the rest of the floors being heated from below. By understanding how we used the rooms in our house and adjusting the schedules accordingly, I was able to keep everyone comfortable and stop unnecessarily wasting energy. But I knew I could do better, and I wanted to use some automations, so I looked for other ways I could save energy. First, there was the guest room. This room is only used when someone is staying over, so why would I want to heat it up at all if we don't have any visitors? I already have a guest mode toggle in Home Assistant that I turn on when someone's visiting for more than a day. This stops certain automations from running, and turns on a bunch of smart plugs in the guest room for when people stay over. These heat miser thermostats have a standby, or away mode, that can be activated on a room by room basis which stops the heating schedule from taking effect. When standby mode is on, it keeps the room at a minimum temperature to stop any pipes freezing or any other temperature issues. I added an action to my existing guest mode toggle automation that turns on standby mode when guest mode is turned off, and turns off standby mode when guest mode is switched on. That means that when the guest mode is on, it applies the same bedroom heating schedule and temperatures in the guest room as it does in our main bedroom. When guest mode is off, it stops heating the guest room altogether. I did a similar thing with my holiday mode toggle. I turn on holiday mode when we're going to be away for a long period of time. This stops the robot vacuum cleaners from running, it turns most of the smart plugs in the house off to save standby power, and it cranks up some of my home security features. I made similar adjustments to my holiday mode automation to turn all of the thermostats onto standby mode when holiday mode is enabled. This keeps the house at a really low temperature to stop the pipes freezing, and saves me a ton of energy when we're not going to be home. When we're about to come back from holiday, I turn off holiday mode, which tells the robots to go clean the floors, and turns the heating back to its normal schedule. And my last heating automation isn't about saving energy, but it is definitely about saving money. When we first moved into this house, we sadly discovered that all the underfloor heating pumps had seized up and weren't working. It cost me thousands of pounds to replace them all, and I had a plumber here for days draining all the heating and flushing it out. I asked the guy why this happened and how I could prevent it in the future. He said he'd often seen things like this happen when people had their heating switched off for long periods of time over the summer. The pumps just sat there idle, and if the heating system is gunked up, the pumps might get stuck. He suggested that I run the heating for a few minutes every month or so to keep them moving and to stop them seizing up again. My eyes lit up and I thought, I can automate that. So now, on the first day of every month at 8am, all of the thermostats come off standby, and the target temperature gets set to 28 degrees Celsius. This causes the heating to come on immediately, and starts pumping hot water all around the floors to get the pumps to move about. 
It does this for 15 minutes, which is long enough to unstick the pumps, but not long enough to meaningfully change the temperature inside my house. And then it sets all the thermostats back to whatever settings they were set to before this process ran. Hopefully this is enough to stop the pumps from getting stuck and saves me from having to pay another huge heating replacement bill. You might be wondering how Home Assistant knows what the heating settings were before this automation runs. Well, this is where one of the coolest things I learned about Home Assistant comes into play. Did you know that you can use a scene to record the thermostat settings from a climate entity? That's right, you can use the scene.create service to create a dynamic scene of your climate entities, and in my case, the state of each thermostat standby setting. This saves a snapshot of all my thermostat settings inside the scene. Once the pumps have run for 15 minutes, I use the scene.turnon service to reapply the dynamic scene I created earlier, and all my thermostats go back to whatever settings they had been on before the automation ran. This is really powerful, and forms the basis for a lot of my air conditioning automations as well. Because I live in London, where the weather sucks, I don't have to run the air conditioning that often. When we do run the air conditioning on a hot day, it's usually in the bedroom at night, because we sleep better when it's a little cooler. I put a button on our bedside wall panels called Comfy Night AC that activates a predefined home assistant scene that sets the temperature to 23 degrees, turns on quiet air conditioning mode with the fan swinging things pointing away from the bed. I also don't want to run the air conditioning if someone has left a window or door open because, as my mother says, we're not paying to cool down the outside! Shut the fucking door! Instead of yelling at people, I use an automation to turn off the air conditioning when a door or window has been left open and I turn it back on again when the door closes. To do this, I put a Zigbee contact sensor on the back door and created an automation that is triggered either when the door's been left open for over a minute or when the door goes from open to close. I use trigger IDs here so that I can use one automation to take care of both turning off the air conditioner when the door is left open and to turn it back on again when the door is closed. In the actions area, I use a choose action to run a bunch of tasks depending on whether the automation was triggered by the door being left open or it getting closed again. If the door is left open, I use the same scene.create trick on the air conditioner climate device to take a snapshot of the current settings of the air conditioner. I do the same thing with the heating too, because I found that the builders we had over installing our new kitchen left the door open all day, so it was just constantly heating in there and wasting energy. The automation then turns off the air conditioner and puts the heating on standby. Once the door is closed again, it triggers the other branch of the choose action and reapplies the heating and the air conditioning settings for this level automatically using the scene.turnon service. I have another very similar automation that's triggered when both of the residents leave the house. The automation creates another scene with the states of all the air conditioners in the house and then turns them all off. There's no point cooling down the house if nobody's home. When we come back home, another automation activates that scene and the air conditioners turn back on to their original states. Pretty cool, huh? And that's how I'm using the heating and cooling automations in my house to keep the temperature at really comfortable levels without wasting energy. If you found this video useful, then please give it a thumbs up. It really helps me out. If you've got any examples of climate control automations that you've been using in your house, then please share them in the comments. I love learning from my subscribers, and a lot of the automations that I use in my house have been inspired directly from things in comments that you've left on my previous videos. After almost eight months of living here, I've managed to create quite a bank of automations that turn the right things on and off at the right times to save energy, and therefore save us money. I'll be doing more videos about these automations in the future, so if that's something that's interesting to you, then make sure you're subscribed to the channel, so that together we can make your home smarter.